Hi everyone, it's Helen Blunden or at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and this time round it is Sue Monk Kids, The Book of Longings. Now you might recognise her name, yes she was the one who wrote The Secret Life of Bees which was also brilliant. Now I just want to talk about this book which was very interesting. As you can see it's a hefty read but I got through it in basically just a few days because I loved the story. But initially the story didn't suck me in. Why? Because the story on reading about it seemed to be a Bible story. And I guess I'm not one to read about um, Bible stories, um, the life of Jesus. But basically it is about the wife of Jesus. It's about Anna who's a rebellious young woman who's gifted who is a gifted writer with a curious, brilliant mind and writes secret narratives about the neglected and silenced women around her. Raised in a wealthy family in Galilee, she's sheltered from the brutality of Rome's occupation of Israel and she's expected to marry an elderly widower to further her father's ambitions, which is a prospect that horrifies her. A chance encounter with the 18-year-old carpenter Jesus haunts her and his ideas and his passion are intoxicating. So when I read this initially, I thought, oh... I really don't want to read this book but because it was from this author I thought I'd give it a go and it was immediately sucked into the story. Now the story is really not about Jesus and after all many of us already know the story of the Jesus of Nazareth. It's actually around the people, the women around him. Now because this is fictional if you're expecting the story of Mary Magdalene and whatever it's nothing like that. This is purely fiction and the assumption is that Jesus at the time would definitely have been married somehow. He was, what, I think in his 30s, well, even less, he would have been married. So the author then makes this assumption that who was the wife of Jesus? And I loved Anna's character because she was someone who wrote Greek, she wrote Aramaic, she was a scribe, and she was different for a woman of her time because she came from a family of her father was the lead scribe for King Herod and her brother also was happened to be Judas. Judas had really strong ideas about wanting the Romans out of Israel. So, um, so we get to also know about her relationship with Judas but at the same time how frustrated she was about being a woman in that household. Now luckily for her she had Yaltha who was her aunt and her aunt as well was also quite like her, quite um, free spirited, she was unmarried but she also has a secret and a secret which I'll tell you here, she was looking for her daughter right? But Yaltha and Anna get along so well because they help each other out unlike Anna's mum who she didn't like and who was always trying to quash her independence and get her to be married so the, the family could progress in, um, in their name and reputation in the town. So really the, the story for me is this is really about the sacred woman, the idea of and the strength of women's different women's voices. It's not mainly the focus is not on Jesus, it's not on his story but as we know the story of the life of uh, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, it's a story that goes in around that and that is also fictionalised. So Anna has um, a young friend Tabitha and unfortunately Tabitha also is a very free spirited young woman who loves music, who loves dancing, which were kind of alarm bells at that time. But um, she's sold into slavery, she's raped by King Herod and um, I guess his staff. And so she's pretty much made mute by the fact that her, her tongue is cut out. And so it looked pretty horrible things that did happen to woman, women. But at the same time, I found this book actually quite, just showed the power of women and, the, and their strength when they get together and when they work together and when they help each other out. They're defiant, they're proud, they're, they're independent they can get so much done, they're creative, they're resourceful, they're resilient despite everything that comes their way. So if you're expecting a story about Jesus then this wouldn't be it but you get snippets of what the relationship may have been like if there was a woman on the scene. 
a wife. One of the things that really struck out for me when I was reading this is right towards the end, Sue Monk Kidd provides kind of like her notes about why she wrote this book. And I would strongly recommend you, you read as to why she wrote, wrote this book. What I also liked that she mentioned that the fact that imagine if Jesus was married, imagine he had a wife, she would be the most silenced woman in all of history. Her voice completely disregarded, unacknowledged, discredited, ignored, much like the, the story, many stories of other women in the scriptures. Now, I don't want to go into that because really I'm no expert on the scriptures. I mean, I have a hard time going into church any time. <laughs> but um, I really love this story simply because it was so powerful and so great um, for women. But at the same time, there's a kind of reverence towards it. And yeah, just a wonderful book. So highly recommended, The Book of Longings. If you've read this, let me know what you think. I'd be interested to find out. Okay then, now. Next book, well, I think it's going to be this one, <laughs> Kate Morden. I'm re still reading it. I'm halfway through. That'll be my next book review. Okay then, bye for now.